All right, guys, Spencer Z1. Today we are talking about making power with the ignition system upgrades. We're going to take you through how it all works, uh, why we do it, and uh, how easy this install is. All right, let's get locked in. All right, guys. Like most systems on things with four wheels, uh, ignition systems have been evolving and upgraded over the years. Uh, I'd say really in the mainstream focus since the hot rod era uh, and become readily available uh, to the masses on the late end of that. You know, the concept of uh, spark and ignition being good has been chased all that time, but having simple and easy upgrades just purchase and put in your vehicle uh, have been in place, I'd say, since really uh, that time. The benefits? covered to no end, right? We, uh, we make power in cylinders by having a better fire uh, and not having misfires or partial misfires. That's really what we see as a benefit. We saw that firsthand recently in a uh, benchmark test uh, on a set of coils. We used uh, one of our associates trucks, 2010 Nissan Titan, 140,000 miles on the clock. The truck was equipped with an intake uh, ahead of our test. No exhaust upgrades, no tuning. It's got a little bit of a plus size tire. We saw gains at the tire of 29 pound-feet, yes, and 20 horsepower at the tire. Uh, we were shocked, to say the least. But uh, the truth is, we ran those tests repeated, 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 and then we drove the truck, and we were going to, oh, yeah, hands down. Before it came in for service, owner had reported it wasn't full-on misfiring or anything, just occasionally run a little rough, felt a little, little hesitation, something we think is uh, almost common for vehicles that are out there, got a few miles on them. Um, so we were happy to see such great results uh, with the changeup. Truck had 140K on it. It looked like the plugs that came out had been changed, I'd say, within maybe 120,000 miles. The gap was pretty much the same. Nothing was fouled total. No plugs appeared to have carbon tracing or anything like that on to, to represent like a problem outside of the cylinder. Um, life in an engine is, uh, is busy, and uh, life in a combustion chamber is pretty tough. Things aren't always perfect. So we'll take you through how it all works. Uh, how it's simple it is and uh, which way is uh, what we think the right way to do it when we're looking for ignition upgrades on your Nissan. Okay, Nissan in their, uh, in their infinite wisdom has chosen to make ignition coils in different shapes and sizes, connections, mounting solution. Uh, they're, they're different for almost every engine. Some engines even have two different part number coils on the same engine. Thanks for that guys, very exciting. Uh, but even though we may think it'd be nice if they were a little more uh, uniform, we know that there's not a one-size-fits-all coil solution for uh, this market. You got to make sure if something mounts correctly, stays in place, works like it's supposed to, uh, and doesn't require any other modification, patch harnesses, hardware changes, tuning, anything like that. Uh, so Z1 coils, they check all those boxes. They're simple, fit, OE quality, higher output and uh, they bolt right in. So if you can change spark plugs, you absolutely can change your coils. Nothing else will be needed to reap the benefits. Uh, we don't change anything crazy in the coil. Uh, the concept here is not new science, as we mentioned before. This, is, uh, this has been mainstream popularity, I'd say, since uh, everybody started racing cars. Uh, in our system, we don't have like an old school big old can coil and uh, you know, cables that have to run over to control the primary from a distributor with points and then cables to run the secondary voltage back over to the distributor cap that's then gonna transfer to a rotor button and back over other cables and then finally onto a spark plug. No, no. Lucky for us, modern era, we have coil on plug, they're transistorized ignition. What that means for you is that uh, none of that other stuff has to be replaced and the chance of a problem with it is far less. Uh, your ECU has been developed extremely heavily to run well in hot cold, dry, wet, moist conditions, different barrows, all kinds of scenarios uh, have been poured into it and uh, you're not going to have to deal with any changes outside. Just like the OE, we, we operate the same. We've just beefed up the coil uh, windings. In total, we use about 20% more copper in our ignition coils than uh, the OE. Um, we don't mind putting in the extra, extra investment because we're not buying millions at a time. Uh, the good news for that is it will work just the same. So a power source here, when we turn our car on, we send power over <laughs> to 
both coils, uh, windings in the coil. We have a primary side and a secondary side. On our primary side, ECU will control the transistor to ground the circuit. When it grounds that circuit, we will get flow of electrons and current, which will generate an electromagnetic field. Uh, this whole process is known as the dwell cycle of a coil. Let's charge times. We're talking milliseconds, just a few milliseconds, right? ECU says, hey, light it up, and then it will break this ground when it wants to fire at the right time. All the purpose of this is trying to time that spark so that we get firing at the right time and get the most pressure on the downward stroke, on the power stroke, at the right time, so we have the most leverage on our crankshaft. You can actually get them to run at quite the range here of the firing time, but there's a sweet spot. Uh, everybody knows that. Sometimes we can fine tune it, especially once we make some, uh, some upgrades on a truck. But this, is, this video is not about that. This video is about how easy it is to just drop them in without having to tune. So when we charge this uh, primary field uh, coil, it, it makes an electromagnetic field. When the ECU opens that circuit and says, fire away, the magnetic field will collapse. When that field collapses, it's all around this conductor. It will induce a voltage. That's how we get from 12 volt systems to thousands of volts. We're not talking 5,000 volts, we're talking like 25, 30,000 volts. These electrons will get moving on this conductor and they'll be looking for a path to ground. They're not gonna head upstream to the positive side, so they're gonna overcome this zener with their 20, 25,000, 30,000 volts. We're gonna head down to spark plug and jump that gap where we see that high voltage reading if we were to plot it. Once it jumps that gap, it will have a spark event which has a little bit of duration. Again, we're looking at things at a milliseconds uh, time here. Not always perfect in there. That's why it matters so much that your ignition system is in good shape. <clears throat> Even if you're at 1500, 2000 RPM and you're looking for, uh, you know, good performance, you're cruising, uh, you, you want to benefit from a good spark light off and from uh, good spark duration so that you're not having blowout. We, we know our biggest problems on ignition are misfire in the total sense and partial misfire, which is much more common. When you have a total misfire, there's no missing it. We've all been there, we got to address it. Partial misfire, <sighs> shocking how much people put up with this because it usually doesn't progress to be a problem overnight. It happens over time. Maybe you've got 50,000 miles on your truck. It's got some wear on it. Maybe fuel system's not running so perfect. You got a fuel injector that, you know, used to fire a pretty, pretty even atomized uh, mist that went into a low pressure in your cylinder on the intake stroke and that kind of atomized further. You know, in, in an ideal world, we would just have this homogeneous, perfect mix everywhere in the cylinder. Nothing at a particulate scale, you know, that we would think is not perfect. Even when we compress all the way, again, we would hope it would be perfect. And we light it off, symmetry and balance in the chamber would be perfect. And our pressure could be tuned to run in and reach that ideal sense at the perfect time and we'd burn it completely before we ever got to the cats. Some cylinders, a little more dysfunctional than others, you know? Like I said, some, they maybe got they got some problems. Their uh, injector's got a few more miles on them. Had some trash run through there. Had a hard life. So they don't really start off perfect. Pretty common to have a fuel mix. It's a regular in the chamber. A lot going on in there. So you may have a firing event that gets power stroke started and one flame front collides with another. Maybe you have blowout and the spark doesn't happen. Maybe it's a higher concentrated rich mix around the plug and you don't really get a good launch because uh, now your peak KV is really high and you have a sh short duration. A lot of ways it can go wrong. The best way to get it right is to just give it more power all the time. Uh, that's, that's always, always the answer. More power all the time. Uh, you know, you want to have this flame front propagate even, perfect, uniform. You want to have that ideal pressure at the right position as the crank's rolling. You want the most output bang for your buck, right? Cruising, whether you're at, you know, idle 1500 RPM, getting down the road just on the daily grind, or you're like full send at the track and you're running all the way six, 7,000 RPM. Uh, Z1 coils are going to help get you there all the time. Without tuning even, the same charge duration, same dwell time, Z1 coils are going to have significant more output. Some situations or applications, it's 20% more at the max. Some, it's 60% more at the max. They're going to give you more spark all the time, no matter that charge duration. They're also going to reach what we call saturation sooner. Uh, that's the max charge cycle where we've kind of, as much of an electromagnetic field can be established as happened. All right, you're not gonna get any more voltage out of it if you sit there and held it internal, like longer, just cooking the coil. 
Uh, so this is a, uh, a great solution that bolts in. It gives us more output. When we think of the energy ratings, 20% more, 60% more. Think of that uh, rating of joules like a string. If we take that string and plot it on our waveform, we can have a higher KV supported with still a longer spark duration. The blue graph kind of gives you an idea of what an OEM graph may look like. If things were tougher here and we pulled this event up higher, then this duration would be shortened. Maybe we don't have as much energy heat established connection running uh, and we have two flame fronts collide or something. They kind of partial blow that out. You get a shortened duration and maybe you don't get a complete burn. That partial misfire rears its head again and you'll still have a longer duration for the full cycle. It's tougher to blow this spark out. And the other sense, should the event need, you know, to have a higher event, somehow we got a lot of fuel around there, or somebody breathed on it with a little bit of boost, we can still handle it, same gap, uh, and, and not blow out as easier, not have a shorter duration. So we see good, strong, cleaner burns. Just like what we saw on the dyno graph, we saw uh, that benefit when we wheeled that out and drove it. Instantly, the truck felt more alive, more responsive. Uh, it just felt fresh and new. Um, you know, we, we saw the gains were there and we felt them in daily driving and all out when we wanted to lean on it. For us, the performance gain happened at the low end of the RPM band where static cylinder pressure, if you think about maybe like a compression test, is at its highest. When we see cams in an engine, they have volumetric efficiency and they have sweet spots in their rev range where they breathe. There is a sweet spot in each engine where they generate peak cylinder pressure, uh, and that means more pressure, more compression in the cylinder. Usually that's from like a sweet spot where they have flow for intake and not too much leaking back out past valves as we convert to uh, the compression strip. That sweet spot for us occurred, I think it was about 35, 3600 RPM, uh, and that's the toughest compression spot for us to overcome here. We saw our biggest gains in performance on this test at that point. When the plugs came out, we looked at them, they looked pretty even as far as the gap goes. None looked really fouled. You look at the coils, they just look like old used ignition coils. Tough to just say, x-ray vision, ah, yes, this one's a little worn on the inside. Uh, but we saw the gains nonetheless. We know that our output improved performance is what gets us there, gives us that benefit. So, Z1 ignition coils, they work great for you in an untuned scenario. They work great for you in a tuned scenario and work with you in stock configuration. They're going to work with all the bolt-ons and upgrades. If you want to boost your truck and need a little extra mm, to make sure you're getting it done, so you want extra coils can cover you there. Uh, we cover these on both our motorsports side and our off-road team, so cars to the trucks. We've got a lot of ranges covered, more in the works. If you guys have questions for us about this, feel free to hit us in the comments or shoot us a message. If you want to see uh, maybe something supported that you don't see on the site yet, Tell us, tell us which one. Let us know why your, uh, your truck should be made uh, next in line rather than somebody else. Uh, you can look forward to us providing you with parts that again, are gonna be the right fit, bolt on, pattern, offset, connection orientation, stem length, diameters, everything to work perfect. They're gonna plug and play, not make noise or do strange things. That's not what we're going for here. So Z1 Off-Road, we're committed to you guys. Everything uh, for your truck from performance, OEM repair, maintenance, lifts, lowering, <laughs> we do it all. Make sure to check the site out, z1offroad.com, and uh, let us know what you want to see in the next one, guys.